Uh, hi everyone, so uh, I'm here to uh, make another quick video uh, before I turn in for the night. So uh, yeah, my face might look a little bit <laughs> shiny because of the <laughs> moisturizer I place on my skin. But anyway, um, before anyway before anything else, I just wanted to talk a little bit about something that came to my mind. Uh, today I was uh, talking a little bit with... Uh, some people about this about you know like especially I, i've been thinking a lot about this how do you how do you do with things like accusations and and uh uh yeah accusations from a narcissist so especially because i think this is the one thing that all of us always end up dealing with and sometimes you after the relationship or whatever you know it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be a romantic relationship it can be a professional relationship, a friendship, or family family relationship. Uh, generally, after that thing ends, uh, we still internalize what the particular narcissist says about us or has said about us. And um, uh, I was actually talking a few weeks back, actually, with this uh, counselor, not counselor, a psychotherapist about this. And she had told me, because based on my, um, I told you all about my situation of social isolation, it hasn't really improved for years. I mean, for, I thought that actually after COVID, uh, not after COVID, but before, you know, after the self-imposed exile, which was from 2018 all the way to, 20, I mean, 2018, 2019, uh, you know, once, you know, 2020 hit, it, I thought that, oh, you know what? I'm, I'm going to pick out this so-called self-imposed state of a hermit, okay, which was just ironic because at that point in time, as you all know, COVID came. And uh, after that, we have about two years, two or three years of uh, isolation. Uh, I barely went traveling last year, as you all know, um, twice to Korea, actually, um, once in February. Uh, the other time, in, uh, around the end of December, uh, stretching into early January uh, and early to mid January, yes. Uh, so, um, the thing was this how do we actually um, deal with the accusations of a narcissist? Okay, um, I'm going to talk a little bit of this from my own perspective because, uh, as you all know, uh, my my whole relationship with that narcissist or uh, more okay because all narcissists come in packs they just don't just come by one person okay uh once they have your one narcissist you're gonna continue meeting more until you see that's it and then you know almost cut yourself off from a lot the bunch of them uh i realized that a lot of them had this tendency to say that i'm not good enough and uh, yeah, I mean, we, we'll never be good enough for a narcissist. That's the truth about the matter. But uh, you know, the thing is this, they love to use your, the things that are close to you against you. you know? So it's like, I don't know if it's a subconscious thing or it's a conscious thing with a narcissist, whether they actually use some things like such as your religious values, your moral values. And, but to one particular narcissist in my life years ago, I was this immoral person. Uh, they 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 will create uh, news and stories of you, which are not true. Like, uh, but you realize that at the end of it is all just projections of themselves. Okay, uh, they will say that uh, you are sleeping around with people out of your own lustful desires. Uh, <laughs> that you're not a good Christian. That I'm not. Uh, whatever. Uh, that I probably I'm not a good person anyway. Uh, I'm just a, I have I have ulterior motives when I want to be kind to people uh, uh, that they regret being uh, emotionally intimate or physically intimate or um, you know, know all that kind of stuff but the truth is they were never they were never they were never even intimate to being with with me okay uh, you know lies upon lies lie after lie okay that's the nature of a narcissist but when they accuse you of something, saying that you're not good enough, you're immoral, you're this and that, uh, just remember this. None of it is about you. It's actually about themselves. Okay? 
So uh, as I think we all know that common saying, accusations by a narcissist are actually confessions. And when we say confessions, confessions of who they really are. Uh, but, you know, let's say if we come across certain things like narcissists who are using your religious and moral values against you, how do you deal with that? I know that most of us will be trying to defend ourselves. We'll be saying, no, 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 I didn't do that. I don't know. I, I, you, you get into these confrontations. And we know that the thing is this. When we confront some narcissist who is actually extremely mag magnificent, they tend to be uh, very aggressive. They don't just gaslight you or scapegoat you or shift the blame onto you. They will even, you know, start turning really, really nasty, really violent, especially if the person, that particular narcissist, has psychopathic tendencies or sociopathic tendencies. Oh my god, it's really, oh my god, it's a... You'll be, you be praying, trust me, even if you're not religious, you'll be praying. And I really practice my faith now, I think as a Christian, so... Uh, I think that right now I kind of realize this. You know that even after this still, there's a way that they will do, you know, to make you internalize their criticism of you being condemned. I remember that actually ever, ever since I left the narcissist or just cut off all ties with them, uh, and a whole bunch of them, including the myth that the hate knock. Um, there was this claim that I'm really, I really must be a very wicked man that who uh, just, you know, because I made a mistake in my life once, years ago, then uh, they keep on, you know, brushing that mistake in your, in your face and claiming that you won't be forgiven. By them, at least. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the thing is, they aren't God, then, right? But they think they're God, which is kind of funny. But, uh, I, I saw I arrived at one thing. One, other than the thing about them, their, narciss their narcissistic accusations being confessions of themselves and their own shortcomings and sins. Um, there's, this, there's this thing, okay, you know the narcissist, this other second thing, when they start accusing you, okay, they will always, they will bring up something in the past. Uh, it could be something in the past, or it could be just a, a mixture of different true details, okay. But uh, you realize that at the end of it, um, they will always mix it in with uh, some story, which is not true, some interpretation, some accounts. Uh, this is the nature of the narcissist. They lie, they manipulate, they tell everyone else but themselves, lie after lie. But even for themselves, they lie to themselves to earn None of it is true. They believe their own lies because it makes it easier for them to, uh, you know, gaslight and hurt other people. They can do that even in front of God, trust me. You know, during the, the, the end of the world, Judgment Day, it could be the end of your, your lives. It need not be. It could be just when, you know, after Jesus Christ has come back, He has judged the world. He's going to judge the world. They'll still point the finger at you like, the accuser they are. And when they point a finger at you, they will say, look, look at what he did to you in the past. Look, send him to hell first. Send her to hell first. I'm not like that. Because he did that. Okay. You know what will God do? I mean, I know. I'm very, very, very confident to say that. You know, God will look at the narcissist and he'll look at us the ones who are the empaths, who are the codependents who suffered, uh, who actually managed to break free, he'll first say to us, okay, I know. I mean, this is something that I think I'm pretty sure that, that this is what Jesus would do. He'll say, he'll look at this me and others who suffer from a narcissist and say, I have forgiven you for all the things that you've done in the past, even if there are things that are grievous mistakes and sins or whatever, okay? Because you love me. And he knows, okay? Jesus, God knows that. We change, okay? We are 
conscious, we are self-conscious enough to, to, and, and to, to actually change if we know that we have made a mistake. But you know what he will say to the narcissist? Or even the narcissist, okay, the plural. He will say, get you away from me. I never knew you, okay. He will proceed to consign them to hell, okay, for their lies upon lies, okay. So I hope that this will actually put some perspective to everyone, okay. Don't try to justify yourself in front of narcissists, okay. It doesn't work that way. Uh, you know, stay above them. Detach yourself from them, okay. If you, it might sound it might sound very rude or you know like I kind of like indifferent, but that's the way it has to be. Has anyone ever thought how did Jesus Christ actually you know react to those who accuse him of different things? They accuse him of blasphemy. They accuse him of uh, yeah because he he claimed to be on par with God the Father, but he was God. He is God. Okay. He's got a son, so um, he's God incarnate, he can't come, come in human flesh. That was who he was, and he still is. Okay. And they accuse you of different things as well causing sedition, civil unrest, which he wasn't, because his, his disciples were not like rebelling or creating a revolution. Um, they accuse him of breaking the law against the religious law when he was just saying that, you know, um, the love of the neighbor, love of others precedes following laws like written codes. There's something just you know, he, he did something so, it was so revolutionary in just being human, okay, in being kind, in being godly, okay, and kind, and loving, and yet people wanted to put him to death. Um, you know that that's one thing that uh, I I learned as well. Uh, I in the gym, one particular uncle or senior citizen had told me this before. He said I used to ask him, you know, why do you? I asked him because he was always you know taking advantage of, and I asked him why do you do that? Uh, some of your these old older friends are doing that to you. Uh, he paid for different people and without expecting returns, and he's not a Christian, mind you. He said. And I told him about my, I mean, he knows about my experience with narcissists, but uh, I told him that it's made me very reluctant to help people, to be kind to people. But he said, you know what, just because uh, people, some people are really, really unkind, you know, uh, it doesn't mean that you stop being who you are as a person, that you stop being unkind, you stop being kind uh, to everyone else, because not everyone is a narcissist, okay? So, yeah, but to go back to this, stay above people, all these people, you know, stay above all these narcissists. Don't return evil for evil, you know, we are not of their kind, okay? You know, we will be vindicated, we will be vindicated, vindic vindicated, okay, we'll be justified by God in the end, okay? Uh, whatever, you know, you believe in, we will be vindicated, okay? They would. They are the blood they've shed, okay? Metaphorically and maybe even physically. Crap, I mean, of people whom they have hurt and used. It cries out from the ground, just like, you know, when Cain did this to his brother, he said this to God Am I my brother's keeper? And guess what God said? Cain, don't you know that your brother's blood cries out from the ground? You cannot bury the truth, okay? Uh, you can try. Narcissists do that all the time, but you always come out, okay?
Okay, so stay above this. Okay. Okay, have a good uh, night, okay, everyone. Or a good day, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, okay, see you then. Bye-bye.